Hello, today's topic is the data warehouse and workbench. I shall give some explanations about what this is, its functions and why you need to know how to use it. And lastly, I shall show you a screencast of the software in action so that you can have an overview of how it works. First of all, the workbench is your personal workspace. This is where you carry out 80% of your tasks as a BI consultant. The tasks vary from administration to maintenance of the BI warehouse. You need to be conversant with the workbench because quite simply, you cannot call yourself a business intelligence consultant without being able to know how to use the data warehouse and workbench. So let us get an overview of what kind of tasks are performed on the data warehouse and workbench. We can split these tasks into three main categories. The first one is modeling. This is where you design the data warehouse objects. You create info cubes and info objects, for example, to create a working model, which I'll go into more detail about info cubes and info objects in a later lesson. But basically, this is where the business intelligence application comes together. The second group of tasks can be grouped under monitoring. The data transfers through the system from source to destination which are the reports are all monitored. Updates to the data are also monitored. And lastly, we have a group of tasks which can be grouped under scheduling. There are tasks that have to be run periodically in the BI warehouse. This could be loading of data, transferring of data and so on. These tasks are all grouped together under this component of the system. We shall mainly focus on modeling at the first part of this course. Now I shall go into the software to demonstrate and give an overview of the data warehousing workbench and see how it all ties together. Hello again. So this is the SAP GUI, the graphical user interface. When you buy SAP Access, you will get login details from your provider and you should be able to log into the SAP GUI. The SAP GUI will normally be installed to your desktop. And then when you start it, you will see a window like this. So if I click here on Logon, it will take me to the SAP GUI. So type in your password and username. And then right now you are logged on as a user. So the first thing I want to highlight here is what we call transaction codes. SAP allows you to get access to the activities you want by typing in T codes. The other ways you can get to the activity is by clicking on the activities which you see in here. So we've got the data warehouse and workbench here as one of the tasks. There are a lot of tasks which you can reach by using, by using the SAP GUI. So if you know the transaction codes, you can easily get to them without having to find out how to link to them. The first T code which you must know about is RSA1, which is the transaction code for the data warehouse and workbench. So this is the data warehouse and workbench. You have a couple of toolbars up at the front. You have the tasks which you can perform down here on the left hand side. And then you have the data which you can perform those tasks on on the right hand side. So let us go through the tasks on the left. The first one you see here is modeling. This is one of the most used tasks in the data warehouse and workbench. This task is mainly used to create modeling objects which are used to model the business intelligence database. So you have info providers, info objects, info sources, data sources. I will go into more detail about these objects in later lessons. So on the right hand side, if you right click on any of these objects, you will get to see the operations which you can perform on those objects. You can create info areas for example, create multi-providers as an example as well. The second task in this list is called administration. This is where the BI data warehouse has been administered. We have tasks, for example, like process chains, which is used to chain a string of dependent tasks together. You've got remodeling as well. This task is performed when you would like to change the model of the data warehouse. We also have repartitioning. You would perform that task when you want to make space for other models in the data warehouse. Another commonly used task is a BI content. 
SAP has provided sample data for a lot of industries and their common business processes. So basically, you do not have to create all the objects yourself. So you could actually get some objects which are prepared and you can use those as they come out of the box. So we have different business processes here, for example, like financial supply management, human resources, and also we have industry sectors, aerospace and defense, automotive, beverage, category management. So all these industry sectors have data which you can use out of the box and we do not need to create models for them. The last task which I would like to highlight is the metadata repository. This is not really a task per se, but more like a repository or more like a place where you could view data about your data, which explains the fact metadata. It holds information about, for example, what date the object was created or which other objects in the system actually refer to this object. So we have different objects like info areas, info objects, workbooks, queries, reports as well. We've got info cubes, multi providers. You will get to know more about these objects in later lessons. So there you have it. This is basically your playground here as a BI consultant. Over the course of the next lessons, we shall be diving deeper into the inner workings of the data warehouse and workbench. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.